again. Welcome to the very first episode of our new show, Pawns mm. and Patrons, uh, as opposed to many other possible pronunciations of, 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 our, of our title. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? It's so good to see you. Oh, you know, just uh, weathering the apocalypse here in Seattle. Oh my God. I told you it it's was so yellow. <laughs> this is, it's, it's 10 a.m., just to be clear. That's not a sunset. That's, that's smoke. You know. Wow. But we're gonna be inside in a fantasy world where my favorite cities are not burning down. I'm glad that like my long-term hobby is so like disaster proof. Yep. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. this past Steven made good choices. <laughs> hey, if you're gonna take one hobby into the apocalypse, let it be the one that takes place ninety-nine percent in your own head. <laughs> that's a really good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, if people didn't, I well actually Stephen Stephen has all the plans. I should stop. I, my hosting tendencies are cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say that like we have history, and I like telling people why we're all here playing together. Anna, I think that sounds like such a good idea. If Dude, you four could please tell us that information, that would be really great. Anna, how about you? Sure. Uh, so. Most of us have been playing together for years and years since way back in the day when we were playing Miss Clicks D and D with like Pirate Edition and some guest appearances and things and Nimmergeist with Steven. So, what? How many years did we say it's been now? Like seven. Seven. seven? Yeah. So this is this is my longest playing D and D group. In fact, it was the group that I started playing D and D with, and we started on stream. So this is like the continuation of my my D, D roots. So it makes me very happy. And we've played at least 10 different campaigns together. And this is the newest one, which is not D D and something new and fantastic. Right, you are, Anna. We're gonna be playing a game called Dungeon Crawl Classics, which is it's it sort of splits the difference between old school Renaissance style games that seek to emulate like first edition Dungeons and Dragons or old DX D&D &D, and um, a more modern role-playing sort of game. It's it's almost like a uh, first edition feel, but with modern uh, like rule sets and things like that. But before we dive into it too much, um, I just want to like, I want to say hi. I want to appreciate all of you fine people, let everybody in chat settle in, get your drinks. We're going to be going for four hours tonight. This is a, a once a month uh, stream. So we're going to really grind through some adventuring today and then uh, see where we end off. But uh, Rachel, how are you? Oh, I, I'm great. Uh, looks like all the yellow that was in my sky has blown its way up north to Anna. So I've got, yeah, just kind of like a smoky gray existence uh, down here in California. Uh, very grateful to have D&D &D and things like this to uh, create social events for me to interact with other humans <laughs> in the year of our Lord 2020 and uh, couldn't pick for better people to play with. I'm so excited for this game. I know you guys have a lot of history and I'm, I know uh, we played about a year of uh, another space game. Oh, Starfinder. Uh, <laughs> Neil and Jen and Anna and I together and uh, that was that was amazing i really hope that this game runs as long and uh i'm so excited to be playing with you again and steven uh an, an old gm from many moons ago we played a quick game and now i'm so excited to be in it for the long haul with you you can't get rid of me dude i latched Hello. on i'm sticking you never <laughs> want to so i'm just happy to be with you guys hell yeah jen how about you how are you doing i'm doing great i'm living my best indoors life uh and just working from home and enjoying that and i am so stoked to be playing this campaign with you guys it's like if i had to assemble my ultimate cast it's literally this group i think the chemistry is going to be great and i can't wait and i have so many memories of dnd &D with all of you guys uh and we shall make more now mm -hmm. Absolutely. yes i expect laughter where we cry of laughter I'm hoping for some tears. I hope we'll get heartbroken at some point. Um, and I'm hoping for some crazy drama as well. Like we brought in some episode where you have like 
Yeah, somebody slapping somebody else or something virtually. <laughs> <laughs> I do not uh, encourage this in real life, but in D and D for the theatrics, I can see that happening. <laughs> I like I'll peak make... drama is like a Desperate Housewives episode. It's like, like a... no, you didn't. <laughs> I'll have to make sure I have my like old school slap fight uh, supplement <laughs> ready. Yes. Fantastic. You know that also Jen, one of Jen and my characters will at least start dating. Like that always happens. <laughs> so just be aware of that. I, uh, duly noted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will modulate moderate my expectations. Neil. Tell us about yourself. Say hi. What are you up to? Well, the snow has finally cleared, so we can move around now, um, which is nice. And uh, the tree, the broken trees in the parking lot are being hauled away. So the apocalypse is getting better over here. We're expecting a few more days of nice weather before we return to the 90s again. Uh, but other than that, life is pretty good. I wish my cat didn't bite me so much. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, is he too. still in the bitey stage? He's never going to leave. He's got so much personal space. And all you want to do, he's so handsome. He's like the most handsome cat you're going to find. And all you want to do is pick him up and hold him. And he is not okay with that. And he mm. will let you know Aww. he's not okay with that. Um, it was just kind of heartbreaking. Kintsugi is very unhappy that when we play Warhammer on our dining table, she does not get to lie in the middle of the battlefield. <laughs> and push all the miniatures <laughs> off of the table. So that is why I uh, have uh, a number of bites and claw marks uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in doing doing Mortal Kombat with Kintsugi. Well, that sounds like uh, a hero unit, actually. <laughs> uh, are, are you all ready to, to get started and play some game? Let's do it. So, so excited. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know. There's like so much potential for cool characters. It's going to be great. And also one of the things about Dungeon Crawl Classics, so like one, I haven't played a lot. I have played like a number of, of episodes, a number of sessions of Dungeon Crawl Classics, but nothing like fifth edition D&D. So like, we're all gonna be learning as we go along. If we get rules wrong, we'll, we'll do the classic, like roll a d20 and see who's, who's, whose opinion wins. And then we'll figure it out later. I've got the rule book, which looks like this, everybody. It looks so and cool. This, yes. It's got foil cover, ooh, ah. Wow. And um, I've got a whole bunch of handouts in Roll20 that will help us all, like we can look and reference, like, wait, what's my modifier for this again? What, what kind of damage do I deal? So I think it'll be totally great. And um, there will 100% there will be shenaniganery. So uh, first of all, before we jump into introducing our zero level PCs, I just want to affirm something for chats all of our chats, which is that um, prior to this show, we had a very lovely conversation about safety tools and we have a number that we all discussed, evaluated and decided to opt into and use. Um, so I just want everybody like thumbs up. We're, we're, we're taking really good care of each other and we've had a number of important conversations about how to have an awesome role-playing game. And I know that we will. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at our zero level characters. So here, um, uh, at the starting screen that I believe all of you should be looking at right now, we have four boxes, one for Anna, Jen, Rachel, and Neil. And then in the in the middle of these four boxes, we've got 40 different tokens Whoa. for all of our possible characters. And this should be kind of a Hungry Hungry Hippos kind of thing. Each of you should be able to grab those tokens and move them around. So feel free to like, you know, put your curses on there and, and confirm that you can just grab them. And... Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Then what I want to do is I want to go around the table and I want to let each of you grab whichever token you think would work oh, for one of your characters and move geez. it over into your box. So chat, um, Dungeon Crawl Classics <laughs> doesn't start with a fully loaded first level character. No, Dungeon Crawl Classics starts with each of our wonderful players controlling four zero level PCs who are terrible at everything. Uh, and then they're going to go running whoa, whoa, through. Whoa. <laughs> they're going to go running through a deadly dungeon that, uh, from which the 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 wheat will be separated from the chaff, so to speak. And out of these sixteen characters will arise, hopefully, four or more uh, powerful, potent pawns for our patrons to manipulate. So, first of all, Rachel, choose one of the one of the characters that you have uh, rolled up and. Uh, 
go ahead and grab a token for one of them and move it into your uh, into your box. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, Dunatush, and uh, Dunatush uh, is a bit of a glass cannon. You do not want to touch her. And so I will say... Uh, I hope you don't pick the one I want. <laughs> I am going to grab this young woman who looks like she does not want to Oof. be touched. Awesome. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. If I double click your, click your token, Rachel, I'm going to do this uh, on my own, and then I will let each of you do this the second round. Uh, so I double click the token and I choose represents character. And I'm gonna go RO4, Dene Touche. And then for bar three, I'm just gonna make that be HP. Ooh, Dene Touche, Dene Touche, is that her name? D-U-N-N-A-E-T-O-U-C-H-E. Fantastic. Dene Touche has one hit point. Fantastic, that's, well. <laughs> that's my oh girl. My gosh. <laughs> While, while we're looking at this, uh, Rachel, would you tell us a little bit about Dunatush? Sure. Uh, Dunatush um, is aware early on that she does not want to be touched. And so she knows that, you know, she's got to be quick. Uh, she's got a tough life. You know, she's, she's just on the streets. So she doesn't really build up defenses. She puts it all kind of into speed growing up. And she wants to be a quick little kid. And uh, also... She uh, she's picked up some skills along the way. She's kind of like a budding cleric, so we'll see uh, if she can kind of, you know, make use of any of those abilities going forward. Or if What's her uh, occupation, her occupation is do, 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 do. where did it go? Upper left. Uh, right. Wizard's apprentice. Yeah. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's like a scurry about mm. foot kind of little mouse. Let's see, and then we'll make sure that. Yep. Cool. Yep. Uh, and then I can open up Dunetush and I can make sure that we use selected token for this character and save changes. Fantastic. So I think that that should be all set up. Now, uh, Neil, grab oh, some. We're going to take Grand Neil right here. Oh, yeah. Grand Neil! Uh, Grand Neil the lawyer. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm. Just, I'm, I'm selecting the drop down represents character, I'm selecting Grand Neil the lawyer. Next to name, I'm checking the checkbox that says show nameplate. Next to bar number three, I'm making that represent HP. A rowdy four hit points. Just and then I'm going so to the advanced tab, so and healthy. I'm just checking the player permissions to see the name and bar number three, just so that everybody can see all of our hit points and everything. Fantastic. Uh, Jen, go ahead and grab a character. Yes, I'm going to grab this one. Amazing. So once yes. again, going to double click. And who is this representing? So she is Redre, the female herder who herds livestock. What kind uh, of livestock? Um, she herds sheep. Yes, Fantastic. sheep. And she has a herding dog. Uh, and when during her life, she got struck by lightning once. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And now for the second time, lightning has struck on her life and kill all of her herd. And this is oh, why no. she decided to leave her house because she think, how can lightning strike me twice? This must be a sign. Uh, so I must go and leave my house. So yes, she's gonna leave her house and force her uh, stay-at-home son uh, to follow her uh, into adventure. There was just some... Uh... There was just some some discourse in the games industry on moms in games, so I'm very glad that we have good mom representation here in Pawns and Patrons. All right, Anna, of course, I've already set up your first character, uh, Frog Dude, here. Um, excuse me, Froge <laughs> Dude? Fro my apologies, <laughs> good senor, Froge Dude. Mm -hmm. So that's like our archetypal uh, character here. Uh, yes. So would all four of you now grab a second token? And then Ooh. I'll step through uh, with all four of you on how to set it up on your own. Okay, I think that's going to be her son. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Fantastic. So, would each of you double click on the token that you just selected? You should see an mm -hmm. edit token pop up. Mm -hmm. Under represents character, you should click that and then from the drop down, choose which character 
you are representing with this token. I think Gem gets that. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh no, is it me? All right then. Anna, who are you who are you representing? That's Fran the Horse Lady. Fran the Horse Lady. HP advanced. See the name, see the bar. Save changes. And then for Anna, Fran the Horse Lady, use selected token. Fantastic. We're just gonna mm -hmm. shoot through this really quickly. Fran the yeah. Horse Lady with one hit point. Jen, how about you? <laughs> this is Grola Bless. It's uh, Redra's son. Grola Bless, the son of Redra, another yeah. four hit point character. He is going to be. He's do tanky. Great. Yeah. And then Grola Bless, we're going to. But he's very weak, actually. <laughs> use selected token. What's his strength? Nine? Ah, that's not that bad. He's not very lucky, though. Yeah, he's very unlucky. Rachel, well, I mean, his have? mom got struck by lightning twice. What do you expect? He's, it runs in the family. And I. <laughs> Uh, mine's a Syri, C Y R I E. She's got four uh, HP and she is a wanderer. Nice. Very cool. And then Syri. Beetle. You selected token. Fantastic. This is a little bit of bookkeeping that's just going to make it a lot easier later on to like drag characters onto the tabletop. Neil, who is this? That is Hagatha, the beekeeper. Hagatha, the beekeeper. She keeps... Tell us one interesting fact of note about Hagatha. Oh, she keeps far more than bees, but those things are buried under the ground, and oh uh, God. you'll have to find them on your own or join them. Fantastic. All right, everybody grab your third character. There's no overlap so far. Everybody's picking different. So far. So far, we're all good. Neil, tell me about your third character. Uh, that's Guy Claypool. Like, Guy church, Claypool? Like, he really just wants to sing. Yeah, man. Amazing. And let's see, Guy Claypool. Use token, fantastic. Rachel, how about you? This is Beverly. <laughs> Beverly. <laughs> tell us a little bit about Beverly. Beverly is a blacksmith. Uh, she is a producer of some of the finest weapons in the land, but perhaps when she got that government contract, she didn't put the best materials into those weapons. And now um, now the law has come for her as well. Is she, is she may be on the run. She might be. Amazing. Uh, she also notably has five hit points, which is enormous. Yes. Whoa, she is by far my best character. <laughs> Amazing. Jen, who is your third character? So this is uh, Mom Churro. Mom. She's a mushroom fault farmer, indeed. Um, so she's always looking for a better place to grow mushroom at, and she heard that maybe uh, where we're headed is going to be a great place to farm them mushrooms. Absolutely. Anna, who's this? This is Shambler. Shambler. And I think I named this character Shambler to remind me that there was something to do with their speed. Looks like they have speed Let's minus see. two. Um, <laughs> right, so they are... What are they? Are they just a human? Ask no, they're a dwarf. Steven. So they're a dwarf, and also, so here's here's a thing about um, dungeon crawl classics. When you start the game, you make um, you 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 choose you you roll randomly to determine a birth auger. The birth auger that Shambler rolled reduced Shambler's speed. So Shambler moves at ten feet per round. Yep, and proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And finally, oh, wait, wait, let me hook up Shambler to your character sheet. How did you see so, on that sheet that Shambler was a dwarf? I couldn't see it anywhere. If you click over to attributes and abilities, uh, ah. about halfway down the page, I think, there's heritage. I see it. It's dwarf. Got it. Yep. All right. And then finally, all of you grab your fourth tokens, and then we'll talk a little bit about DCC, and then we'll get started playing. Neil, tell me who this is. Oh, that's Barbara, the barrel maker. But you know, she's really more of an artist in general. Barrel making just happens to be what pays the bills. No one is buying her mosaics yet, but like there's a big asterisk over that yet. They're gonna be hot, Steven. They're gonna be so hot. 
but we make. I'm in line. Now. I'm gonna have a, a, a Barbara the Barrel Making Artist original. Jen, who's this? Yes, this is Del Derp. Del Derp. Tell yes, us about the, Del Derp. The peddler. She sells, you know, minor goods, spoons. Spoons. Things she finds along the way. Yes, I don't know why she sells spoons, iron skillets as well, um, and torches. You know, anything you would need to go on an adventure, uh, she sells. But hearing about her sister, Mum Churro, uh, and her intent to go grow more mushrooms somewhere else, she thinks maybe there's a business uh, that could be started. And her sister is really crappy at selling her mushrooms, but she thinks she could make good money off it. So. She decides Amazing. to follow her sister into adventure so that they can become rich. And Rachel, who's your last character? This is Agnes. Agnes is a chest maker, but she has started to dabble in magic. And she's got a bit of a reputation around town now. A little outside of town, actually, is the mother of mimics because she likes to make these chests and then imbue them with magic. So Anna, Tell us yeah. a little bit about your final character, the one that we were learning about just before. Uh, Pebeggy. Pebeggy. Yeah. Pebeggy is uh, the top beggar in her guild. <laughs> she uh, views begging as a very noble profession. She's very proud of how good at it she is. She, she considers it like uh, persuasive speaking and marketing. And it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Then we are all prepped to get started. Let's talk very briefly about Dungeon Crawl Classics. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, awesome. So uh, I've made a little uh, under a folder in it. So like in the journal tab of Roll20, uh, you should see all of your characters. For example, I can drag one out on the screen. Looks great. Uh, there's a folder called DCC Rules, which should be visible to everybody. There's a handout called DCC Oddities that I want to read through real quick. And then there's some cheat sheets and a table for crits, and we can get to those a little later in the game. Some oddities about Dungeon Crawl Classics for you four and also for those of you joining us from home. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off with a zero level funnel, uh, which is a dungeon that will see many of these wonderful, characterful heroes perish terribly, uh, but the ones that survive will immediately gain 10 experience points when they achieve something great, i.e. complete a major adventure with meaningful contribution to it. And 10, 10 XP is what you need to level up to level one. So hopefully by the end of the day, we're gonna have some level ones. The XP system for Dungeon Crawl Classics is that you earn about two experience points for surviving each threatening situation. And I've added onto that. You can also at earn about two experience points for slaying any notable serious threat. And then you will also earn one experience point for spending 100 gold. So keep track of how much gold you've spent because you earn XP for spending money. Uh, a cool thing about Dungeon Crawl Classics is it uses something called the dice chain, which goes from like D20 to D16 to D14 to D12. I think there's a D5 and a 7 in there. There's a D30 at the top end. Um, and certain circumstances and conditions can push the die that you're rolling either up, so you're rolling a D24, or down, so you're only rolling a D16. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Luck is one of the key stats for characters in Dungeon Crawl Classics. Each of you have a luck score. And one of the things you can do with luck is you can burn it either before or after your roll to permanently reduce your luck to add cumulative plus ones to your rolls. Um, and so you can burn five luck to add a plus five to one of your rolls. You can recover your luck by adventuring, especially by acting in, in accordance with your alignment. Um, there's no skills list in Dungeon Crawl Classics, but here's an important note for you players. Anything that you think is relevant from your character's uh, occupation is something that you can say, no, this is a skill that I have and I'd like to you know, like roll it as if it was a skill. So get creative in response to your occupations. If you can argue well for it, I'm, I'm likely to, to let it go. Um, alignments in Dungeon Crawl Classics are lawful, neutral, and chaotic. And these are descriptive rather than prescriptive. They don't prevent you from doing anything, 
but alignment actually affects things in this game. So like when you're a cleric, if you're trying to heal someone who's an opposite alignment, uh, that one is much less efficient, and then two is likely to anger your deity. So, you know, up to you. Um, enemy groups have morale, so when you're fighting enemy creatures, uh, your groups of enemies will check their morale when the first creature is slain, and then again when half of the creatures are slain. Single monsters will check their morale at 50% hit points, and retainers, like hirelings, will check their morale at the first serious encounter or danger, and then at the end of each adventure. And it's just a 1d20 plus their will saving throw, and an 11 plus is successful and they'll keep fighting. But it means that like you're not guaranteed to need to kill everything that you come across. Just as a really quick uh, point of note, a couple things about combat. In combat, each round you can move and then do one thing. And there's a cheat sheet that's the combat actions in that same folder. Um, there are opportunity attacks. So if you move away when you're engaged in melee, they will get a free attack on you. But there's no disengage action to get away for free. So keep that in mind. If you are firing a ranged weapon into melee, if you miss your intended target, you might hit an ally. So be careful. Um, just to touch really quickly on species and class, classic dungeon crawl classics has uh, the old school convention of like your species is your class. So you play an elf, you play a halfling, you play a human fighter. We're shifting that around. Um, each species can play any class and the class quote unquote associated with halfling is rogue. The class associated with elf is the spell sword and the class associated with the dwarf is a knight. So any of you can choose any of these classes as long as you feel like you have stats that are good for it. And then uh, just a really quick homebrew rule here for encumbrance. We're going with simple encumbrance, which is you can carry or wear a number of significant items equal to your strength score. Gold, jewelry, gems, and other things can all go into one bag, which counts as one item for the purposes of carrying up to your strength score. And that one bag can carry up to a count of 100 gold, 100 gems, 100 jewelry items, like whatever. So um, bear that in mind. It's going to be pretty simple, but it will be important because getting treasure out of dungeons is a thing that matters. With all that said, are you ready to get started? Uh, yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Then to set the scene. Here we are. This is Oakwell Hamlet, a small, really tiny village far to the north of the city great, which is under the barony of Justicar Snish, who's the the Lord who you all owe fealty to and you're all beholden to for taxes and, and uh, you, you work his fields and you, you know, make use of his mills, etc. cetera. Um, this, this hamlet is uh, in the borderlands on the border with another country called Uthgarden. Uh, you know, like they're a little bit aggressive. So uh, this, this Oakwell hamlet often has um, uh, a garrison stationed here just to like quell any border tensions, but right now it's it's fairly peaceful. Before we really kick it off, I'd like to find out why you're all here. So uh, let's see, maybe I can make a macro for this. That I think would be easiest. Um, let's add a macro, uh, Oakwell, and then slash roll one T, Y Oakwell. And then shows token macro, uh, row save, in bar, um, and then I think there's something to write visible to players, all players. Save changes. Okay, so um, Neil, in the chat channel for Roll20, could you type hashtag Oakwell? Hashtag Oakwell. Oh. Nice. Oh, no. So uh, one one of your characters is fleeing a matchmaker. Who is that? It's Grand Neil. You know, her Grand kids Neil. are Grand trying to set her up. They think she's lonely. She's not lonely. She might be 85 years old and have a couple of cats, but she's happy and she does not need a boyfriend. Stop trying to get her set up with, you know, the kindly old carpenter down the street. Grand Neil is fine alone. Amazing. Uh, would you please roll next for um, uh, Guy Claypool? 
Guy Claypool just lives here. <laughs> How about for Hagatha? <laughs> That's not true. No, she's here to feed the people, Stephen. I don't. This is oh, a broken sorry. roller. Yeah, my mistake. <laughs> and what about for Barbara, the barrel making artist? Uh, oh, sounds like you have some some deep roots in Oakwell Hamlet. Does this mean that I'm visiting dead ancestors or? Uh, it, it's that you have ancestors here and they're all dead. And why you're here is kind of up to you outside of knowing that <laughs> about Oakland. Love that. State sale. <laughs> Anna, how about you? What about Froge du Day? So again, this is just hashtag mm. Oakwell. Hashtag Oakwell. Oh. <laughs> Froge also has family here. Absolutely. Fantastic. How about for Fran the Horse Lady? Oh. She owes someone <laughs> here. <laughs> here to pay a debt. And I think the 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 like that's a fairly ambiguous statement, right? Uh, I wonder what kind of debt Fran the Horse Lady is here to pay. I think uh well, it obviously has something. Let's see. She's she's technically she's an ostler, which I had yes. to Google. But that is apparently someone who like cares for the horses at like an inn. Yeah. Um. So I think that she she borrowed someone's horse, and she has to go give it back. Nice. That makes perfect sense. How about for Shambler and then the Beggy? Ooh, oh. Shambler has a friend in town. <laughs> mm hmm Yep, but he's not telling you who. And Pebeggy <laughs> is telling the goat. <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense. Pebeggy was begging, and someone gave her a goat instead of money. <laughs> and normally she would be offended by this, but a goat has real value, so she's here to sell it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Nice. Jen, how about you? How's what is Redra here for? Temporary proficient work. Hmm. Yeah, what's what's uh So yeah, I I guess on her way into adventure, uh she needed to make some more money, so she's trying to help out another herder of this time it's not sheep, it's goats. Yes, goats. Fantastic. Um, that's probably how we bumped into each other because I'm kind of assisting this goat herder right now. Yes, with the yeah. sale of the goat. Yes, yes, I'll I'll help with the sale of the goat. And then Del Derp. Del Derp. Uh, you're just like you know doing <laughs> odd jobs around town. Your itinerant labor in Oakwell Hamlet. That makes sense. Yeah. How Del about Derp. Um, lives there. Well, that's Absolutely. where she always grew her mushrooms. Absolutely, in Oakwell Hamlet. Yes. And uh, what? who's your fourth character? Growlablesse? Growlablesse. It's the son of Redra. Yeah. He lives here, too. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Then, finally, Rachel, would you roll for Agnes and then Beverly, Siri, and Dunachish? Agnes is setting up shop, and uh, she is a chest maker, so uh, she'll probably be selling some chests, uh, <laughs> as well as maybe some mimics. So. <laughs> and next, uh, Beverly lives here. Of course. I'm, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> How oh. dare you? She's been at church every week. Siri. Uh, Siri also lives here. Siri does not recognize her. Siri may be lying because she's a wanderer, but she stayed here longer than most places she stayed, so she might identify as being from here. Fantastic. And finally, Donatouche. Donatouche is here for seasonal work. She sort of just kind of followed the migrant parade of workers in. Uh, I don't think she's actually intending to do work, but she's here under that pretense. Fantastic. 
Yeah, when people right. ask why she's here, she said seasonal work, but not seasonal. that I'm going to do seasonal work, just that <laughs> seasonal work is here, and that is why I am here. Those are just right. two words that came out of her, and you put them together. Seasonal no. yeah. <laughs> work. Yes. Yeah, uh, when roll 20 rolls uh, on a table, the, the number result is always zero, even though it gives us a different table result. So, like, there's some weirdness in, in the way that it displays, but we've got excellent reasons for all of our adventurers to be here. So, a few weeks ago, people started going missing from Oakwell Hamlet, including even the two sons of the local smith, the smith named Eldhall and her sons, Kiri and Alban. And this went on uh, for a number of weeks with escalating numbers of people slipping away. And Oakwell is small. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a prominent town. So missing people were obvious. Then three nights ago, late at night, one of the missing folk came crawling back into town. It was Kimul, a dwarf. His form was twisted. One of his arms was rubbery like a serpent, and his teeth were jutting out from his mouth like a tiger's. One of his eyes was slitted like a cat's, and his skin had bristles pricking out all over. He gasped, the, the keep, and then he died of his wounds. Now, strangely enough, all four of you have heard rumors of the ruined keep nearby. Would each of you roll 1d10? Ooh. Fantastic. I just you need to point out- luck. Hey, I know. Uh, <laughs> anyone who knows me playing with this group knows that that is the only time that will ever happen and it was the first time, so. There you go. More likely rolling high is bad, actually. I hope it's good. <laughs> Rachel. Probably. Among your four characters, it is known. Beware the well. It has swallowed many a poor soul. That is not what I wanted to put. To <laughs> <laughs> Little advertisement. Hey. Remember, everybody, you can watch the show at our multi Twitch. <laughs> which you can see on our screen by watching any of our multi-twitch streams. Beware the well, it has swallowed many a soul. Meanwhile, <laughs> Koibu, your four characters. Yes. Uh, Reroll, because this is already well known. Some of the villagers kidnapped in the night return as feral bestial monsters. <laughs> hmm. Eight. Oh, yes. Here we go. Nothing good can come of disturbing the evil ruins. You'll only unleash the horror beneath the hill. Anna, your four characters know that the keep was once ruled by a pair of brothers, chaos lords, the foulest champions of evil to ever stalk the land. And that, Jen, I, I tried to copy that down, but it was so much. The keep was uh, once ruled by. It, it's in the I've roll twenty chat. Roll 20. Oh, oh, ha! Check it. Yes, and uh, seven. Jen, you also know. Beware the well; it has swallowed many a poor soul. Okay, I'll be very paranoid if the well then. So, knowing this, now here you stand in front of the keep, despite Justicar Snish's recent edict, banning anyone from going within 500 paces of its walls. Whether out of a sense of duty or protection, fear or horror or curiosity, greed for gold or for power, you lot have banded together to get to the bottom of what's plaguing Oakwell. Now, before we take our first break, we see one other scene, which is our view zooms out back from this group of 16 brave souls. Do any of you have an animal with you? I do. Well, at least a goat and a horse on my yeah. end. <laughs> 16 brave souls and a goat and a horse. <laughs> the, the view zooms out. And, and a dog, a herding dog. Oh, I have one of those too. And two, two dogs. herding dogs, got it. <laughs> and, and, and we zoom back through a crystal ball 
which is in the center of a large octagonal table, which is in the center of a richly decorated room around which stand four shadowy figures. Neil, would you care to introduce us to one of those four? What do you look like? Mm -hmm. What is your name? Uh, my name is Agatha. And... Uh... Oh, wait, no, you were talking about no, the other people. The, yep, wrong one, wrong one. Wrong, yeah. wrong character. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But I really like ah. Agatha. Well, no, 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 see, it's Valerie. And, uh, you know, like, we've got some things that we need to do. There's, like, a whole keep over there. It's going to be interesting. We're going to get some people from our house. And then we're going to have, like, a huge party to celebrate the successful adventures that they're gonna go on. And like, don't you worry because I've got dresses for all of us. It's gonna be fabulous, woo! What does Valerie look like? Oh, well, you know she's just in the latest fashion. Can you believe that I'm a summer, but with this weather, I'm gonna have to dress like an autumn and it's kind of a problem, but like, don't worry, <laughs> we've got the gown to go with it. And like the dyes are a little slow in arriving. So maybe we're gonna have to come up with some like weird different type of smoky eyeliner to do because like the blue's not arriving in time. And servants. Standing to the right of Valerie, we see Anna's character. Would you introduce us to your patron, Anna? Standing in a dark, obscuring cloak with a cowl obscuring their face is a sorcerer, Anwar, the sorcerer of the Whispering Cowl. And if you lean close, it Wait, seems... Wait, what, what's, what's your name again? Anwar. Anwar. As in noir film with an A at the beginning. Um, or, you know, maybe maybe Anwar has a French accent and I can try to, and maybe Jen and I can work on this together. Anwar. Yes, Anwar. workshop the accent. Anwar. Um, yes, and if you lean close, it seems like Anwar might be whispering something, but it's it's too far away to quite grasp. There's like this that comes from inside the cowl. So I, I assume that Valerie is often like, what'd you say? And he's like. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And Anwar is carrying a staff of power with a small snake wound around the bottom. And um, standing there being of many words and few at the same time. Wonderful. We proceed, uh, the camera panning around to land on Jen. Tell us about yourself. Let's, let me try the voice. We'll see if it sticks. <laughs> I live in De Burrow, an imposing cavern located underneath the city. And today I am looking for the worthy. But these adventurers look weak. I bet they would be better for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, stranger, and what do you look like? My name is Petrov, the prophet of Teotwaki, which stands for the end of the world as we know it. Um, and I am covered in bandages. We can only see my eyes sticking out, and we can see I had I had a bad time. My skin is burned. I have one blind eye. I'm missing a finger. Like it's it's not it it hasn't been a good time in my life at some point, clearly. Uh but I'm very proud of my blind eye actually, because I lost my vision when I saw the end of the world. And therefore I do not hide the blind eye. Fair trade, really. Amazing. And panning even further quite a long ways it like an awkwardly long pan away from petrov uh we see rachel's character <laughs> tell us what your name is what you look like and how you feel about these 16 adventurers and their assortment of animals through the looking glass as that pan kind of comes you see my character take 
even one more like kind of shuffle stuff away from Jen's character and maybe towards Valerie. Um, Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Kara. Uh, you can call me Kara because, well, I care a lot about you. And uh, shucks, I'm just so excited to be joining you all here today. We have uh, a lot to cover, but we are going to be focused on getting ourselves back together, on accomplishing things, and on making tomorrow a better and brighter day. And uh, Kara has uh, very short purple hair, kind of like a side shave right here with a little bit of a, a swoop over top. And she's got uh, kind of like the, the modern equivalent of like a like a t-shirt, like a camp counselor t-shirt. She's got a, a little wooden carved whistle and um, she's got like a, a tabard on. So, so Kara's got a bit of a background where, uh, I don't know, do I get too far into this right now? Nah, yeah. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kara's we, just we, uh, we, a young, we'll enthusiastic them. purple and uh, very happy to be here. Wonderful. Then, with the four of you looking interestedly at this collection of motley adventurers and the adventurers approaching the forbidding walls of the keep on the hill, it's time for our first break. We're going to take five minutes and we're going to take a break every hour so that we get a chance to get up, stretch our legs, get a glass of water, and we will be back momentarily to see what lies within. 